please welcome to the TAM fam, Mary Lynn Ricecoff. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I mean, thank you for joining. You have, this book is, it, it's, it's so funny, and it's so, I think it's so on point, because all of us juggled two versions of ourselves, right? So if you're mom, you have your mom you, and then you have before you were the mom you, and then you have this fame, and then what you call fame-ish side yes. of your life. Yes. How do you describe it? You know, I was thinking right as I walked out here, what popped into my brain, my Instagram post of pulling my trash cans in and just like, this is my glamour, this is my glam life, like that, in a nutshell, yeah. you can go from, you know, the success, uh, the excitement of it, the getting glammed up yeah. to come on Tamron, and then, you know, you're pulling the trash cans in at the I end know, of the day. Exactly. And that's, those moments are, that's life. That is like, you know what? I, I, I know exactly what you're saying. Yesterday, we had this big Disney event and all the new shows that are coming out. I ran home in between these parties to give my son his dino nuggets. And there I am in my red carpet dress with my white jacket. I took it off and I was like, this is life. And I ran back and did another red carpet. But it's like, with dino nuggets under my nails. <laughs> it's like, this that's is, right. That's that reality versus. And that's like your heart. You're like, dino nuggets under my nails. <laughs> <laughs> Coming with me to my fancy event, for sure. Well, you have so many shows. It, it, Brooklyn Nine-Nine and, and many others. But, but I was so intrigued by the story that you told in the book of being, I think it was the Golden Globes. And the cast, you were set at another table from your cast. Okay, this is the epitome. I mean, we started talking about the trash cans, the yeah. real, you know, the stuff inside, the low high. But then sometimes out in the world, Real stuff happens. You yeah. get invited to the Golden Globes. That's as big as it gets. Right. That's as fancy Huge. as it gets. You get your outfit. You get glammed up. Get ready to go. No plus one. Right. Excuse me? I'm going to this <laughs> fancy event by myself. I get there. They take me up to the mezzanine, which is fine. Everybody else that's, that I'm on the show with is down there. I'm not even sitting with them. I get sat at a table by myself. <laughs> Could you imagine? I have. It's happened to me. When I, I, I've been... And it's the difference between what you see and right. when you're in that like, inner sanctum and sometimes you're like, okay, this is fancy, but not what I but expected. But does it inspire you to... So for me, you know, I, 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 when I was at the Today Show, for example, I always say I was the D-list on the list, but I was the on the Today Show. But it inspired me in many ways to you know, pursue my own dreams, not measure myself against anyone, right? And I said, let me find my lane. I don't want your highway. I just want my lane. Yes. So there you were looking at their lane, but also bossing up in your own way. Because, yeah, you're like, okay, they're down there, but that doesn't stop me from working. That's right. And that doesn't stop me from getting the shows. And so at shows. the beginning of the night, I'm... I'm wanting to go down there and then just transi transitioning into, oh, I'm gonna go walk around and make friends. I'm gonna go talk to people. I'm gonna go talk to Cheryl Crow and Corny Cox. I'm gonna say, hey, what's up to Puff Daddy? Who was, <laughs> who was a fan of mine at the time See, on that's 24. that's what I'm talking about. I didn't know. I could have sat at the table and been boo-hoo and I walked around and said, all right, I'm just gonna go mingle. Right. I'm not gonna sit here alone and found fans, found friends, had a That's good time. what I'm talking about. There you are looking down at the other people going, I wish I was at the table. And there's Puffy, now known as Love, is a fan of yours. Yeah, it was unreal. I mean, he looked at me, he said, you're my girl. From, <laughs> from 24, it's like, oh my gosh. That was an amazing moment. Uh, in the book, you talk about fame, but you also talk about dating. And you describe being sort of famous in this shift in power dynamics when you date. I love this quote here. You said, um, during the pandemic, the closest I came to dating was watching CNN while eating and then telling people I had dinner with Don Lemon. <laughs> <laughs> Full disclosure, I called Don Lemon last night. He's one of my best friends. I read this quote to him. He burst out laughing. He was like, I wish I could join this morning. He was doing election coverage till 2 a.m. But if you ever want to you go out with Don Lemon, my Don Lemon right now. Listen, he's I'm probably one eye open watching this. But how does fame affect your dating life, especially when they're competing with Don? <laughs> well, first of all, no one can compare oh, to gosh. Don, all right? No one can compare to, to my Don Lemon. <laughs> it's a perfect relationship. We never even have to meet. I'm just like, we're together. Um, we're together. 
Emotional intellegence, in, in, intellectual intelligence, he's a, he's tells a me about the world. He's a handful. He's a handful. <laughs> when you get a chance to finally have your date with Don, make sure it's a swim day because he likes to rock a Speedo. I won't show that picture, but there you have it. Okay. I'm just, he, Don is going to be outside my home tonight. <laughs> we oh, can so. hang out in the French Riviera. Uh, he can wear his Speedo. Oh, gosh. <laughs> But tell me the dating dynamic of it. How does it affect when you're so famous? So I did, I shouldn't admit this. I did dip on Bumble for a second. I said I wasn't, I said I was an actor. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. And Bumble is the dating site. Yes. Where the women take charge. Yes. Okay, hold on. I need to hear this story. We need more time. Marilyn's not going anywhere. We're going to find out what happened when she <laughs> dipped into Bumble, the dating site, and what came out after the break. Comedian and newly minted author Mary Lynn Ricecup. Her new book, Famish My Life at the Edge of Fame, is a vulnerable tell all of sometimes forgettable but not regrettable journey through Hollywood. And last commercial break, you decided to go on Bumble, the dating app. Yes. Okay. And what happened? Okay. Couple <laughs> of things. Ultimately, this is about not playing small, but it's gonna come off like I'm being a little bit, I don't think I'm being catty. Okay. I put actor, we're talking, we're bantering, we're texting. And then he comes back with, oh, you're an actor, where do you wait tables? I was like, excuse me. Um, and then I was kind of toyed with him a little bit, I'll be honest. I said, oh, well, I don't. I'm working, da da da, back and forth. He Googles me. Then all of a sudden, oh, I didn't know. He sees all my credits. Wow. So it's like sometimes you play low, but then I had to come back and be a boss. A boss. I had right. to be a boss. And it shifted. And then he was like trying to. Did you go out with him after that? I did not go out Good. with him. Good. I wouldn't go out with him. I'm happy to go out with him. But it was a moment, yeah. you know? Did you feel, well, because I understand why you put, I'm an actor. I mean, if, you, if you'd put on your Bumble profile, here are all the shows, it would seem like you were. Right. So I was coming in sort of on the being level. Being normal. This person. is what I do. Right. And he played the card of, oh, you think you're an actor? And I, well, actually, I am. Yeah. I think I have, you and know, I have some 170 and credits for right, something. Right. Are you still on the site? No. I'm, I'm trying real life now. If, any, if you know anybody <laughs> you want to set me up with. I'm single, ready to mingle.